All right, ladies, this is your test review for chapter 16 and 17 on early medieval art and Romanesque art. So I'm going to start with chapter 16. Um, I had a question yesterday about just clarifying what is the medieval period. So the medieval period is also known as the Middle Ages. And you want to think of that as um, it begins at the fall of the Roman Empire, okay? And chapter 16 really covers like the early medieval period, and then Romanesque covers um, the later medieval period or the later Middle Ages, okay? So the early medieval period is roughly the 5th through the 11th century, um, and then the Romanesque era is roughly the 11th through the 13th century. So try to keep your time period straight. Because as I said, the College Board every now and then will throw those questions at you, so it's good to kind of have your bearings as far as the, the artistic time periods. Okay, so in Chapter 16, I want you to pay attention to these different um, regional... Um, artistic styles that we studied um, and take note of what periods they occurred and where they occurred. Um, we studied art from the British Isles in Ireland, aka Hiberno-Saxon art. That was uh, small portable objects. We looked at the cloisonne purse cover and the cloisonne fibula, which is a college board required work that you should know. You should also know that term cloisonne. We also looked at Viking art from Scandinavia, Norway, and Denmark. Remember all of the animal interlace, that awesome uh, wooden Viking ship that I showed you um, with the mast that looked like an animal head. So lots of um, abstract animal forms and undulating lines, which is known as interlace. Um, we also touched on the Carolingian period and the Etonian period at the end, which were mainly in the countries of France and Germany. This is where we took a, a look at a couple um, churches. One that you should know is the Church of St. Michael's, and take a look again at those gigantic bronze doors that I showed you briefly. You should also be familiar with Bishop Bernward, who commissioned the building of that church, as well as the doors, as well as that really cool um, bronze spiral column inside of the church that we compared to the column of Trajan. Touching back on Carolingian art very quickly, um, we looked at the equestrian portrait of Charles the Great, possibly his grandson Charles the Bald. Um, but what I want you to remember about Charles the Great, also known as Charlemagne, is that he uh, not only was the ruler of this Carolingian area, which I have for you in a little map right here, so you can see roughly where that is, um, but you want to remember him as being um, a big proponent of classical art. He loved Greek and Roman art, which is perhaps why his equestrian portrait looks the way it does. Um, so if you remember in class, we compared this portrait to the equestrian portrait of Marcus Aurelius and did a little comparison there. So try to recall what we talked about there. What were some similarities and differences between these two sculptures? Wrap up my um, review of chapter 16 with this little review slide for you so you can take a look at um, some of the overarching characteristics for each period. So just kind of be familiar with this. Um, I'm looking at your test now, and the test really is primarily on Chapter 17, so I'd like to spend a little bit more time in this podcast covering Chapter uh, 17, which is the Romanesque era. So I'm going to move on to that now. All right, so moving on to the Romanesque era, um, we are in Northern Europe, Northwestern Europe. Um, so we looked mainly at churches in France, though we did look at a few from Germany, Italy, and Spain. Um, so I'm going to try to touch on some of the really important ones. Obviously, you should know that the important artworks are the required works by the College Board, but also works that I've talked about in class or that I've had you discuss in groups. 
Um, and always just pay attention to the bolded, underlined information in the PowerPoint, and of course, play the Jeopardy on Canvas, and that will also, also help you out. Um, so the time period, as I said, is roughly 11th through 13th centuries. Um, our themes are, we see a lot of experimentation and innovation coming about, especially in church architecture. We talked about why and how that happened. Um, lots of sacred spaces, and that is your essay hint. You're going to have to um, identify and discuss a sacred space from the Romanesque era and talk about the relationship between the appearance of the space and its function or, or what it was used for. So you should be thinking about that as I'm going through and start formulating your outline for your essay. Um, and we also looked at a few images uh, that convey the theme of war and violence, particularly in the Bayou Tapestry. So that's another important work that you should know about. So this was one of the first Romanesque churches that we looked at in class. This is Saint Etienne in France. And we talked about this because it contains that timber roof. Um, so this timber roof is showing influence from the early Christian basilicas that we studied a few chapters ago uh, from the Holy Roman Empire. However, soon after this church is constructed, the, the flat timber roof is uh, kind of thrown out the window and they adopt the stone barrel vault, which is then replaced by the stone groin vault. So think about that and remember why that transition, why that change happens and what advantages um, were came out of that. And of course, we talked about the Church of St. Foy also in France. We looked at the exterior, we looked at the interior, we looked at the plan, we looked at the reliquary inside. So you should be very familiar with this work. It's also a college board required work. Um, and this would be a great example if you wanted to use this for your essay. Um, so think about the, uh, the exterior, of course. What does the exterior look like? What does the interior look like? Um, how were these gigantic stone barrel vaults supported? Okay, what are all of these architectural elements that you see here? All of these, all of these new architectural terms that we've been learning, you should be using those in your essay and um, demonstrate your understanding of all of those terms. You should absolutely be able to read a church plan. So this is the plan of St. Foy. So how did this facilitate um, all of these religious pilgrimages that were happening during this time. Why were these religious pilgrimages happen, happening during this time? Where was the pilgrimage route? Where was it going? Okay. Then, of course, we studied the um, church portals. Many of them contained uh, tympanums that contained um, relief sculpture, like, like the one we're looking at here. These were one time painted. Um, and this last judgment theme was a very, very common theme. Why was that? Okay. How does that theme, um, how does that relate to the placement of the tympanum? Okay. So think about that. Briefly at Speyer Cathedral in Germany, um, it built in the beginning of the uh, 11th century. And so we talked about the implementation of the groin vault. Um, and what advantages that have. It allowed for this large Clara story to be implemented, allowed light to flood into the nave of the church. Um, so be familiar with Spire Cathedral. We also spent a fair amount of time looking at Durham Cathedral in England. Um, this is the earliest example of a ribbed groin vault, okay? So you take a look at the vaults and you notice that extra little addition onto the vault, making it a ribbed vault. It's also a pointed ribbed vault. So you can see the, um, the arch here has a slight point to it. So this is uh, the earliest example of that covering a three-story nave. So you have the aisles, you have the triforium, sometimes called the tribune, and then you have the Clara story at the top letting the light filter in. After we move from church architecture to sculpture, and we talked about how um, Monumental sculpture was pretty rare during uh, this time. Pretty much the only large-scale sculpture that we see uh, is the tympanum relief sculpture. Um, so small-scale sculptures become increasingly popular. Uh, some small-scale sculptures, such as this one, the Morgan Madonna, 
is meant to be placed inside of a church, okay, so for public devotional purposes, while other pieces, such as the head reliquary of St. Alexander, which I'm not sure we talked about this in class, uh, some of these items were made for the wealthy, okay, or for kings or rulers and were placed in their homes for private devotional purposes, okay? And these were often very decorative, covered with silver and gold and gemstones. You can see there are little portraits of saints down here at the base of the reliquary. Um, so um, you just want to keep in mind that we see a lot of small-scale sculpture becoming popular. Their tympanum, I'm not sure we spent um, too much time looking at this in class. This is from the narthex of La Madeleine uh, Cathedral in Vézelay, France. Um, and so the, this is actually a different scene than what we're used to seeing on the tympanum. It's usually the Last Judgment. But here we see the ascension of Christ and mis mission of the apostles. Um, so think about the stylistic characteristics of this time period. Uh, lots of times the figures are very abstract or simplified. We often see hierarchy of scale, so Christ is usually much, much larger than all of the other figures. Um, lots of times he's flanked by the four symbols of the evangelists. Um, so remember all of those reoccurring characteristics. This particular theme here, the ascension of Christ, okay, he's ascending to heaven, um, is related to the Crusades. Oops, what did I do here? Um, because you have to remember that the Crusades was a contemporary event that was happening during the 11th and 12th century. Lots of religious wars were happening during that time. And so, of course, that theme, it's not surprising that that theme would appear in a lot of the art that is made during this time period. You also spent a fair amount of time reading about the Bayou Tapestry. This is one scene from the Bayou Tapestry. This is the Battle of Hastings, okay? which the whole tapestry is based on that, the uh, Norman defeat of the Anglo-Saxons in 1066 in Hastings. Um, so be familiar with this work. Um, and I would also say that you should be familiar with the influences of the imagery here. Of course, it's influenced by contemporaneous events. But we also mentioned that much of the imagery, many of the scenes were influenced by Greco-Roman art. Um, so what specifically do we see here that is Greek or Roman looking? What specifically do we see in these scenes that is classical looking? We also compared it to Trajan's column. Again, um, what similarities do you see between something like Trajan's column, which is completely different material in that it's a low relief, gigantic sculpture, and something like the Bayou Tapestry, which is obviously two-dimensional fabric, wool and linen um, tapestry. What similarities might you note about those two artworks? Think about that as well. And I'm going to end with my key points slide. So to review with you, of course we know the time period. The Romanesque uh, period happened about the 11th through the 13th centuries. Churches were created in response to pilgrimages. Pilgrimages happened in response to a renewed faith in Christianity, um, pilgrims went on these travels to seek penance for their sins, to be healed, um, things like that. Um, the form of churches during this time was mostly the cruciform plan, which is a modification of the basilica plan. Um, so the addition of the transept then transformed the basilica into the cruciform plan, okay? Um, we see the reemergence of exterior sculptural decoration. Remember, in the Byzantine period, you really didn't see any sculpture on the exterior of the churches. Now, in the Romanesque period, you see it almost always. Okay? We see vaulting, round arches, exterior sculpture. All of this is why, in the 19th century, art historians dubbed this time period the Romanesque era. However, there are many differences between the Romanesque era and the t actual time of the ancient Romans. The Romanesque architects did not use concrete, their sculptural figures were not realistic, and there was a severe decline in realism in both painting and sculpture. 
So good luck studying tonight, girls, and I will see you in the morning.